there, friends. I'm here with another quick movie about the Creality 3D Ender 3. Uh, I've mentioned before it's on sale at Gear Best. Well, you know what? Let me walk you through what happens if you pick one of these up. After it arrives, you need something to print. And I like to use Tinkercad because it's super simple. And I just like to bring out a cube. And the cube, when it comes out, is uh, 20 millimeters on each side. I like to shrink it to 10 millimeters on each side so my print, my first print is small. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to shrink that cube and just watch it go down to 10 millimeters on a side. I'm scrolling the wheel in and I'm going to click on the height and I'm going to only make my first object 5 millimeters thick. I'm going to change this to cube. When I click over in space it is done. And now that item is ready to be printed, and I'm going to just export it as an STL. I've got a folder called 3D Modeling, and I'm going to just name this 2Cube because I've already got one named 1Cube. Once you've got your STL file created, then it's time to launch Kira. You'll have to probably download it unless you have it like I do for another printer. When you do get it open, you need to set up the Ender 3. Click Settings, Printer, and do Add a Printer. We want to go to Other, and we want to add the CR10. But instead of calling it the CR10, let's call it the Ender 3. When it loads, the uh, build area is way larger than ours, so we need to go to the Printer Settings for the Ender 3. And when we manage the settings, Simply hit machine settings and change them to 220, 220, and 250. And the rest you can all leave the same and then hit close and hit close. And then we need to bring in an item. Well, let's go to open file. I'm already in my 3D modeling folder where I showed you I put the parts, and right there is 2 cube. Now when it comes in, it is in the very center of the printer. I have found for my first print, I like to come out near the front edge of my bed as I get it all level. I have also found that moving it towards the left edge is not the worst gig ever, and I just print this same part all the way around the printer to get it level. I'm also frugal with my prints. Instead of doing the recommended, I always uh, start at the 0.2 and then go to custom. And I like to print at 0.3 millimeters. And then as I scroll down through this list, I quite often change to 5% for my infill, uh, depending on if it's something that I want to be really sturdy. And then here's where I change my uh, filament printing temperature uh, depending on what filament I'm working with and then I found I also like to print with my bed at 70 eventually you may want to tweak the speed and such as you learn more about your printer I also like to go down to the build plate adhesion and I like skirt and I like four uh, lines of it note if you switch to brim uh, this is where it picks how much brim you want, like 8 millimeters. Or if you do raft, uh, it does a large 15 millimeter raft. So this is what you start to learn is how to adjust those numbers. You can see that this print is only going to take two minutes, which I really, really like as I experiment with it. I just plugged in my SD card to my computer, and now I can click save to removable drive. And when I hit that button, boom, it is ready. It saved it as CR10 2 cube. Uh, my screen, the number of characters, I always make sure that I can see which piece I'm trying to print. And that is good, so I can hit eject. And let's take it over to the printer and watch how this first print works. All right, so we're over here at the printer. You gotta slide the bed back. And then this is where I can slide in the card. I've got two cards that I move back and forth from my build area to the printing area. Card inserted. Now I can tap the button. Notice I've got no temperatures for either of these. Scroll down to print from SD. 
I need to refresh it because I plugged in another card. And right at the top is my 2-cube G-code. I tap that button and it starts heating. You'll notice that it heats the bed first and it's heading for that 70 and then it'll go to my 210. As you can see they heat up relatively quickly. Having trouble getting it staying in focus and then not also having that light in the way. You'll notice that I am going to be printing on a glass bed. Um, I prefer the glass bed because it is more smooth. You may have seen this little uh, adapter that I printed over here. Uh, that is on Thingiverse if you want to print it. Um, it is the exact same thickness as the mirror. So this section right here is a match to that little bump right there, which then bumps into the end stop. And keeps everything level. So there you can see on the right that the bed is almost up to 70C. And once the bed hits 70, then it starts heating the hot end. So there you can see it's aiming for that 210 that I put in the G-code. And then as it hits 200, you'll see it start to move. And then these knobs allow you to raise and lower the bed to get the right, uh, you know, location that you want. So I've got my eyeballs down here at the same level as the camera. And I'm just watching and if the print is not adhering the way I would expect, then I can tighten or loosen to make it do what it needs. If you go to the right, then it pulls the bed down and that would lower the bed. If you go to the left it raises the bed up and uh, would make it so that it was uh, a tighter fit to the hot end. I'm going to lower this down just a little bit more. There you can see underneath it is printing that magic little cube and it will only take a moment and we will see that this printer uh, is pretty well calibrated and is printing this little cute guy just the way you'd expect. And then I would walk around and print another corner and another corner until I had the whole bed just the way I wanted. So that my friends is how I would work the first print with a Ender 3 printer. Uh, walked you through all the steps. I hope that helps. If it did, please click that like button if you have not clicked subscribe, please click subscribe to my YouTube movies. And if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new movie from HL Mod Tech, click that little notification bell. Thanks for watching, friends. If you have any questions, add them in the comments below. And we'll see you again soon.